<laughs> Happy Friday, TGIF. Come up here, children. Yes? Needs to go up higher? Who does? Me? That. Yeah, go ahead. I'm afraid to touch it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> testing, testing. It spins when I do it. That's neat. That's okay. It's because it's pulling. Is that good? Almost. We're almost there. <laughs> you tell me what it looks like. I have here Mason and Athena. Hi. AJ. Boom, boom. <laughs> Is it good? You tell me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we look good. Just I make sure we have a YouTube camera too. Last time I was blocking the screen, somebody goes, hello, do you know what you're doing? Yes, okay. we do. We're amateur. This is amateur hour. <laughs> We're getting better. So say hello to everybody. Hi. Hi. What are we doing next Hi. week? Hi. We're going on an RV trip. We're going on vacation. Ba -ba -ba. <laughs> yes, this is the slide I was working on last second because I want everybody to know that I'm going dark next week. We'll see you the following week after that. We're doing this TGI Friday. This is uh, what episode 28. Episode 29 will not be on Tuesday. And episode 30 will not be that next Friday because we will be on an RV, RV trip. trip. I'm so excited. They yes. tell me when I was 2016. Amen. Yeah, so we're going on RVing and we will be gone next week. So I uh, won't be doing anything live. I'm going to unplug completely and have fun. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. Thank you very much for joining me. Kids, they're going to probably stick around for some funny stuff and then they leave as soon as I get serious. Yep. Right? Yep. <laughs> this is not the RV. I do not I do not have that kind of a class driver's license. I am we're going in a different kind of RV. A little bit smaller. That's a bus. You have to have be able to drive a bus. I can drive that thing. Holy smokes. I'm a quantitative economics and decision sciences major, UC San Diego, 29 years in the business, Orange County native, Capa Valley High School grad, nine kids, three of them right here waiting for some funny slides. Yay! <laughs> I'm an avid runner. I would like to say, you know what, during this, uh, during this time period of COVID-19, I haven't run enough. We've done a lot of walks, not, not done enough running. <sighs> I'm going to get back to that next week on the RV trip. Um, these are my kids. You saw three of them. I brought six. We're a Brady Bunch family. My wife brought two. I adopted hers. She adopted mine. And then we had that guy. I think he's got doing about a B plus, right? And on the uh, B plus, maybe even A minus. On a, I think A. A, my wife said, director, producer, the potty ruler training. of our lives. Boy, she does such a great job. For potty training? For potty training, yeah. So Zeke's potty training. And so is our dog. I'd give our dog a C minus, but she's a little younger. Yeah, a D, my daughter said, for dog. <laughs> Anyways, uh, my background, I've also been uh, all over the place in the press and my company's reports on housing, your local real estate snapshot. It's really, that's what it's about, driving home exactly what's going on in the marketplace, not what you read in, from closed sales chart data. And speaking of closed sales charts, you're going to hear a lot about uh, May closed sales. CoreLogic is about to release their, their data, and I'm here to tell you it's ugly for May. But that was a reflection of what? March and April. That's when you placed an escrow. And wasn't that the beginning of COVID-19? So when it really looks like that, when it's that negative, about 45 days out, that means May didn't look good at all. So there you go. And June's going to look better, and July's going to look smashing. And I have the proof, I've, I've listened to, I've talked to escrow officers, I've talked to escrow land, we have escrow sponsors, I've been in touch with them, we know what's closing. And we know that there is a wave and a lot in the pipeline right now. So I don't wanna look at the rear view mirror and operate my vehicle. I want to look out the windshield, the active inventory, that's supply and demand, that's the last 30 days worth of pending sales. From that, we're able to get the expected market time. Buyers and sellers would want to know, if you place your home on the market today, when are we going to open up escrow? That'll tell you the velocity. It's not days on market, because days on market is a yucky statistic. Yucky. That's my audience. And um, yeah, it's not, not the best. 
It's uh, one of those stats that it doesn't really tell you the true flavor of the marketplace. If a whole bunch of homes come on the market, it just it, it drops, but that doesn't tell you much. Taking into consideration how many escrows, what the active inventory looks like, that's what's important. So it's all about setting expectations of, of uh, buyers, sellers for everybody. People even thinking about real estate. Right now, expectations are off. I'm in Los Angeles, Orange County, Riverside, San Bernardino, and San Diego. And did a presentation today for uh, Los Angeles and right there in Orange County because I, I zoomed away. And it was a lot of fun. It was in Whittier. And I'm, I have been doing it for a year now in uh, four Southern California uh, counties of LA, Riverside, San Bernardino, and San Diego. And I've been doing Orange County uh, since uh, 2004. So we just broadened our horizons last year. And the most recent report came out Monday and San Bernardino Riverside, we just crunched the numbers and now we're putting together the report that comes out on Monday. And this is the one that came out for Orange County, Los Angeles, and San Diego. So if you subscribe, this is the one you get, it's called Seize the Day. It's all about explaining to buyers, sellers, homeowners, the general public, kids, dogs, you name it. They all need to know that the market is hot right now. It's contrary to what everybody thinks. Just because we're in a recession does not mean that it equates to uh, buyer's market and values coming down. Quite the opposite. Instead, we have record low interest rates and it's just pumping the uh, market up, uh, upward. Ooh, I have another kid. Mia's joined us. Hi, Mia. <laughs> so go to Reports on Housing, R-E-P-O-R-T-S, the plural, report, reportsonhousing.com and uh, subscribe. And uh, there is a, a sample report section, so you can see exactly what the, what the report looks like. And it comes out every two weeks. I have a PDF version of it for printing out. I have a Microsoft Word version of it. For you agents and people out there in the real estate industry, that is so that you can put your own logo on it, that you can actually use it for newsletters, postcards, and get it. you can email it to everybody. You just can't post it to Facebook and social media and your, uh, you know, your... Uh, your websites that would water down the need for a subscription so it comes out every two weeks like I said and I alternate the counties Riverside and San Bernardino is this coming up week $15 per month or $150 per year you get a month free if you use the coupon code fire because right now the market is on fire I have an audience of five right now six actually fire f-i-r-e and uh, I'd like to thank our sponsor escrow leaders I've known uh, their owners for a long time, and Bob Fox is a personal friend of mine. I think I've known him since my hair was black, and I didn't have his, these weird wrinkles up here. His, my hair was, okay, not black, dark brown, I don't know, ash blonde, sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you. She's keeping me honest. That's what wives are for. But I, you know what? I love the slogan, we must be good servants to be good leaders. I think that's fantastic and I know that that is exactly the way ownership and the culture of the whole company works. And they're an independent escrow officer regulated by the Department of Business Oversight and they have branches in both Orange and Riverside counties and they are here to serve you. So they have 16 escrow office officers and 40 employees and your clients and money are safe with escrow leaders and many layers of safeguards to protect you, your money, your identity, they have and always will continue to meet or exceed industry standards to keep you safe. And uh, they're involved in, our, in the industry association and de dedicated to servicing the communities. We walk the talk and are actively involved in our community. That's their, their motto. They actually are out there doing some great things for the community. So they are escrow leaders. They, they, they lead with service both with escrow and in the community. They handle all types of escrows. Contact them today at 949-373-7000. That's easy to remember, 949-373-7000. So now, spring fun photos. Hey, exactly. I think, is this the last day of spring? I don't know, but don't forget to say Happy Father's Day to Oh yeah, Happy Father's Day to everybody out there. I forgot to even have the slide for that. <laughs> so sorry, Happy Father's Day. So Happy Father's Day to all the fathers and grandfathers that are out there and uh, just want to wish you a, a, a wonderful Father's Day and, and it's supposed to be pretty on Sunday. Hopefully the June gloom will burn off like it did today nice and early and uh, we can get some pool time in. 
some sunshine, some vitamin D. So happy Father's, Father's Day to everybody out there. On Sunday. On Sunday. And I hope everybody gets nice massages, their kids take care of them, they bring them breakfast in bed, they massage them again, they uh, bring them lunch, they do lots of fun things. Let's do that. Well, how about this one? Me carrying around all the patients I have left for 2020. <laughs> That's about all the patience we have. Thank goodness we're going on the road to reboot because I love my home. I'm getting a little tired. I need a, little, I need, I need a vacation from my home. You carry a little white purse? Yeah, I do carry a little white purse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. How about this one? Sodaly Tober. <laughs> That's the name of the boat. I'm not saying she's right. I'm just saying I get it. <laughs> yep, that's how I'm taking my nap. 2020 is going to be a synonym for crazy for the rest of time. Yo, my man over there is a little, you know, 2020. <laughs> I gained control of the car for a moment, Your Honor, and then things went 2020. I was alive in 2020. That was 2020. <laughs> Just when you thought 2020 couldn't get any worse, vegan Slim Jim. <laughs> I actually want to try it. Just it's saying. Asparagus. Yum. I like asparagus. It's good. Oh, this is brought to you by the love for my bride. <laughs> we went on a picnic last weekend. My daughter said, hey, just let me know if you want, uh, want me to come over and watch the kids. She's 24. And I said... Yeah, okay, win. <laughs> and we did that, and I surprised my wife with some sushi and some uh, cheesecake, and we had this nice view, and we went to a park where nobody else was because it doesn't have... Ah, it's just it was a hidden little park with nice views, and we got to see the sunset, and it got cool because it's June, and uh, then we uh, just had a nice evening. It was just such a wonderful evening, right? Yes, we call it date night. We're getting back to that. We did date night in the in the master bedroom, and then uh, we needed to get out there, and we didn't want to go to a restaurant, so we went picnicking. And this picnic basket actually was a Father's Day gift. It came an hour before we were to leave for for our picnic. But we supported our local restaurants. Yes, by purchasing we food. supported our local restaurants by purchasing food through our local restaurants. Thank you. She's keeping me honest, like I said. She makes me a better person, a better man. The Southern California market. Oh, look at all the kids. <laughs> See ya. Thank you very much for coming. Mia, Alana, Athena, appreciate it. Anyways, spring market. It's, it's like this, it's a spummer market. It's gonna be a summer market right now because we're going into summer and actually summer market Technically, spring market starts right after Super Bowl and rolls till about the end of May, three quarters of the way through. And then we get into our summer market because the kids graduate. But this mar this year was all messed up. So instead, our spring was booted and we're, we're really uh, getting a lot of activity right now. So that's why I'm going to refer to this as our spummer market. And if you look at it, and I did this before, but I need to continue to show this. We're at a lowest point for Southern California for a June since 2013. And we're starting to get closer towards, by the time I get to July and I look back, it's going to look like a record since I've been keeping data in 2012. And that's because the uh, numbers are kind of driving the wrong direction. So... Yes, there was a time where it was less, but that was at the end of the year, beginning of the year, but not for a June. This is 2017. This is June 2017. You can see 2017, it is, there's a lot more homes. You have to go all the way back to 2013, June of 2017 to see less homes than where we're at right now. That's not a lot of homes. That's a problem. I'm here to tell everybody, tell your homeowners, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your hairstylist, tell, tell your dog groomer, tell whoever it is that they all have it wrong on the housing market. Because the active listing inventory is going the wrong direction. And when you don't have enough of a commodity, and I always think back to Cabbage Patch dolls when I was a kid, my dad bought a Cabbage Patch doll and uh, we were out in the parking lot and, my, and somebody came up to him and asked to purchase said Cabbage Patch doll. That just tells you 
how there weren't that many Cabbage Patch dolls. It was like there was a run on them. And that's kind of the way housing is right now. It's kind of like Cabbage Patch dolls. There's a run on them. There's not enough of them. So, and that, you could see it reflected in the inventory. On June 11th, that was a week ago yesterday, 29,858. It was down 4% in two weeks. Last year, 43,842. That's 47% more than where we're at today. And the gap is getting larger because we're going the wrong direction. This is what we call the wrong direction. And I can show that. That, like I said, the lowest level since June of 2013. Ooh. I almost spilled my uh, Frappuccino. Brought to you by Greece, not Starbucks. This is brought to you by Greece because we like Frappuccinos. And my, uh, no, is that what they're called? Frappuccino? The frappes, sorry. And this is actually Greek frappes. We get them uh, the compliments of, uh, I believe she gets it online someplace. Anyways, delicious. It makes me think of Greece every time I take a sip. So today we're at 29,075. That's 3% less than a week ago yesterday. Gosh darn it, we're going the wrong direction. We just shed another 800 uh, homes. That's going the wrong direction. And, and for comparison, compar comparison? comparison purposes, 2007, there was nearly four times as many homes as we have on the market right now today, and I will bring that up forever. And why do I bring that up? Because so many people don't believe why it's so hot. It's hot because there's nothing on the market and demand is juiced by low interest rates. So we have very, very low supply, which is why it feels so feverishly hot in the marketplace right now. You, uh, I just did this again from yesterday through the last four weeks compared to the five-year average. I do this every week to see what's going on with the number of homes coming on the market. And darn it, it's at down 22% still. It's not moving. It's not changing. Homeowners are not placing their homes on the market. More people have to view this so they understand exactly what's going on in the marketplace. COVID-19 is absolutely still suppressing the supply. We have a supply problem. People used to say we had a supply problem before, and that was true to a certain extent. We had the same number of homes come on the market. The reason there was a supply problem was because we, we uh, had a really high demand, so everything went into escrow. So that's not really a supply problem because as soon as interest rates got up to 5% back in the day in 2018, all of a sudden there wasn't a supply problem. Same number of homes come on the market, they were lingering on the market. That's the difference. If you look at this, Southern California housing demand, because now we have a real supply problem, not enough homes coming on the market, 22% less in the last four weeks. Southern California housing demand, I'm talking to my son, Mason. I have one person now in here. Hi, Mason. Hi. <laughs> it's very hard to do these because I'm used to doing them in front of audiences and now I have one person in front of me. So anyways, Southern California housing demand, if you look at it, I'm telling you, extremely strong. It is not like the Great Recession. Our housing stock is so strong, it is not at all, you gotta qualify for homes. It's not like the prior to the Great Recession where anybody, including my dog, could get a mortgage. Way too much fraud and way too much junk going on, subprime, all that stuff, pick a payment plan. Ugh. Watch so many episodes, I've gone into detail why it's not like it was uh, prior to the Great Recession. There is a demand problem at the very beginning of, the, the, of this COVID-19 lockdown. We couldn't buy our lemonade, but we can now. We've adapted. We've definitely adapted and we've changed as a in real estate industry. And what everybody's been able to do is, you know, we'll wear their proper PPE. We'll wear our masks. We have social distancing. We have notes on doors. We have contracts to cover everybody's behinds buyers, sellers, everybody, so that they understand what, what's going on out there. And the mortgage interest rate environment is fueling all this demand. Check this out, this was as of yesterday. This is the, uh, the, this is the mortgage survey across the United States that Freddie Mac does, and it hit a new record, another new record. Four weeks ago, we were at 3.15%, uh, and then it went up to 3.18, and then it went up to 3.23, something like that. And now it's down, back down to 3.13. You see this? That is a record, an all-time record low. And that is what's fueling everything. It is nutty. And if you look at the 10-year at 0.697, that's not budging. And that means interest rates are low. You see this? This is where we started to get interest rates low. And really not much has changed here. It's just that... 
the, remember, I've talked about it before that everything's broken underneath of the hood. We really should have interest rates at about two and a half percent right now. And what we, we had rates that were like three and a quarter or even three and a half at one time and, and even four percent. But now they're coming down because things are slowly but surely getting fixed under the hood and everybody is thinking, huh, real estate's getting better. So I'm going to start to uh, do some things in real estate that I didn't before. And I'm talking about as far as buying, servicing loans, servicers can start to come back online and there's uh, not as much uh, risk aversion. People are wanting to... Uh, wanting to uh, participate in investing in real estate loans and servicing and all that type of stuff. So that's slowly but surely coming back. And it is the jet fuel that is propelling our market forward. We have demand that is crazy. COVID-19 is not suppressing demand. It's not at all. It's quite, it's no longer has a grip on demand, period. Instead, we have this demand that is just crazy. On June 11th, a week ago from yesterday, we were at 18,162. That's up 17% in two weeks. And this is such a climb. Look at this. First, the initial thing. This is where I said, ha, huh, things are changing. And then it went bunk, bunk, bunk. And you think it's still going up? Well, last year at 16,912, that is 7% less. That's the orange line than where we are at today. And this is all of Southern California collectively. Each county is kind of doing a different thing. You have to actually subscribe to the report to get the nitty gritty details of what's going on in each of these marketplaces. So uh, April 16th, we were 8,252. That's down here. That is 55% less, but look at where we are at today. Oh. That's the highest since June of 2012. I'm about to unveil it. Here it is, 19,317. Do you see that? It's up nearly 1,200 from a week ago to here. That's up another 6%. And if you look at where that puts us at 19,000, it's putting us up here, which will be above that purple line, it is above the purple line, which is 2017. So actually demand currently is the highest since June of 2012. It beats 2013's June. Holy smokes, that's hot. Today we're at, 9, I said 19,317. Gosh darn it, I did it again and I forgot to fix it. So pretend you don't see that. Am I doing a good job of blocking it? Okay then. So this is where we are today. No, we're good. This is where we are to get today, June 11th, or actually two, a week ago yesterday, 49 days. On April 16th, we were at 109 days. And <laughs> SoCal last year was at 78 days. So you can see at 49 days, much hotter than we were last year, which is that orange line. It's becoming a big difference. I'll be able to put a little bar there again. Look at that. Today we're at 45 days. That's the highest since June of 2013 for a June. I'm gonna say, that's pretty hot. I say calor, it's hot. So, LA is at a 55 day expected market time. Hot seller's market, anything below 60. 60 to 90 is a slight seller's market. That's where sellers get to call more of the shots, but not as much uh, uh, change in, in value. But once you get below 60 and the lower you get, the more values change. Values meaning going up. This is another reason why I want this thing to heat up. I mean, uh, more, not heat up, but more inventory. We need, it's getting too hot for my liking. It's getting awfully hot. Like turn on the air conditioning, that type of hot. I am actually getting a little warm because I don't have air conditioning going right now. LA County is at 55 days, it's dropped four in a week. And Orange County is at 52 days, dropped seven in a week. Riverside County's at 39 days, it dropped five. When you get into the 30s, that's stupid hot. It's just dumb hot right now in Riverside County. San Bernardino County, 37 days, down two, dumb hot. And San Diego County, 39 days, it's down three, it's dumb hot. So these three counties, hello, actually, hello, San Diego and San Bernardino and Riverside need to place more homes on the market, like now. It's not a buyer's market. I am so sorry. Just go out there, go look for a home below a million dollars 
uh, along the coast in San Bernardino Riverside. Go look at homes uh, under 650,000. I'm gonna tell you, very, very hot. And it's not a balanced market. And it's not even a slight seller's market where there's only a couple people in line to purchase. No, it's a hot seller's market in all five Southern California counties. And it is fishing with nets where you have the right price, you have the right bells and whistles, and it doesn't smell like a dog, look like a dog, act like a dog. That's a dog. It better be priced like a dog. So if it's not priced like a dog, it'll sit. But if it's a nice looking property that comes on the market, it's going to scream. It's going to have 10 offers. That type of thing. We're only one lucky fish gets to purchase that property. That's it. That's what it's like. It's fishing with nets. I know. I get it. Where are all of the listings? That's what buyers are saying. This is my representative of buyers. This is Mrs. Linda Byer. And she's wondering, where are all of the listings? So here, attention, homeowners, I'm going to say it again. It's now, right now, please, please, homeowners, if you think that it's not a good market, watch my video. Understand, I'm not lying. Somebody said on my YouTube channel, good theory. Theory? Holy smokes, go out in the marketplace. It's not a theory. I know what's going on. I talk to a lot of real estate agents, talk to a lot of brokers. I hear what's going on. Well, I was doing Whittier. Whittier is at like a 29-day expected market time. That's like stupid hot. There's areas that are like that. I know Ranch Santa Margarita here in Orange County, right uh, next to our neighbor where I'm at. I'm in Ladera Ranch. I'm telling you, stupid hot. It's below 30-day expected market time. Go buy a house there. See what it's like. See how many offers are generated. I understand. It's frustrating. How many offers are on this house? 10? Are you kidding me? But I want to get a deal. You are getting a deal. You're getting a deal because you have a 3% interest rate, mortgage interest rate. It's called a record low. Look at where it is today versus where it was a year ago and how much you're saving versus if you think that value should come down, how much you would save at, at uh, let's say values were supposed to come down 3% or 4% or 5% or whatever it is you think and then add a percent because interest rates last year at this time were at 4%. So do the math of what that mortgage payment looks like and what are you rooting for? For things to slow down and the only way that they would slow down from here right now is if we lock down again, which I don't anticipate that we will, A. And B, it will, it, it would, it would take, uh, it would, it would take a whole bunch of homes coming on the market. I don't anticipate that. So I don't see that happening. I don't, I don't see uh, this big deal that the buyers are going to get. They're getting the deal based upon what's going on in the marketplace with not enough homes on the market, but they get a low interest rate, 3%. Do the math. See what it does payment-wise. I'm going to have to do one of those analysis when I have time because I'm going on vacation in an RV. So I understand, but it's a recession. Gosh, unbelievable, right? Why aren't values going down? It's a recession. Don't values go down every single time? The answer is no. A, this is a pandemic. It wasn't led by real estate. It wasn't led by stocks. It wasn't led by a certain industry that was a bubble. Instead, it was COVID-19 lockdown led to a, a recession, which I like to call a pandemic. And only two out of the last five recessions caused values to come down and they were led by real estate. This is the Great Recession. This is savings and loan scandal. This one was uglier than this one. This one was just so bad. We did some very naughty bad things. We no longer do those naughty bad things. We have a healthy housing market. So that's why everything is just moving right along, chugging right along because we, we don't have uh, a, uh, an affordability issue. Not with 3% interest rates, that's for sure. That's why this is happening. Please, can I buy your house? They all should be wearing masks, by the way. It's just a supply and demand issue. This is what I talk about. This is what I've been talking about since we went into lockdown. I said, this isn't the Great Recession. And I, I felt like I was the only one talking about it. This isn't the Great Recession. It's not going to cause values to go down. Not until we get a lot more supply and that never happened. What we didn't anticipate or what a lot of people didn't anticipate, because I said you have to watch the number of homes coming on the market, was the number of homes that were not coming on the market, which was leading to the supply coming down. Even though demand came down, so the new properties that came on the market would sit on the market, we weren't placing as many on the market, so we didn't get really that much lift during that time, so we didn't add to the inventory. 
and I understand you want values to come down, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, but that's not going to happen. And I am going to bring this up again, closed sales. I'm, I need everybody to understand this. This is where closed sales are. Uh, I just didn't update that. That should say uh, uh, a week ago. Yeah, uh, it shouldn't even say yesterday. I did that. I updated it for another presentation. So, excuse me. This is the month of May. You can see it. It's at 10,176. It's down 14% from April. And SoCal last year was at 18,789, which was 84% more than where we are today. Do you see? That's this versus this. I get it. Ugly. And I've heard the argument, well, the reason why we're having so much demand right now is there's pent up demand and they're just eager to purchase. That's not what it is. I'm here to tell you, hello, it's not what it is. It is 3% interest rates that's driving demand and it will continue to drive demand as long as we have them. And I don't anticipate interest rates to go up because I don't anticipate the 10 year to go up until we start seeing the overall economy doing better. And that's what, it's not the short term rate with uh, that, that change. We have to watch the 10 year treasury. So understand that. <sighs> Coronavirus, COVID-19, 8 million, 8.5 million around the world. And this is what it looks like. That's an ugly thing. Because right now we're adding on average over the last week, 139,200 cases per day. And this is the United States at almost 2.2 million. And you see uh, LA, are you kidding me? They're only, 8,000, is it 8,000? Yeah, 8,000 away. And this is gonna happen in a number of days. I thought it was gonna take like 10 days. It's gonna be days when LA becomes the second most impacted county in the United States. Things to watch, absolutely. Because the United States, we did this, but this is what everybody's talking about. And people say it's testing, but we're starting to see more hospitalizations in areas like Arizona and in uh, Florida. That's what you have to look at is hospitalizations. There is, I, I had that one that showed hospitalizations, then I just kind of did a, like a little check on it. They were off. I don't know where they're getting their data from, but then you go to the states. And I don't have the time to go to every state and see what the data looks like. So uh, I, I couldn't go to that. That was the ventilator slide. Um, I know that uh, it's more like 64% of uh, ventilators are available in Orange County, not the 85% or 96% or something like that. So I said, scrap it, that uh, I needed to fact check it and the, the facts on that thing, just because it was in uh, this nice cohesive columns and things like that, it was not very strong, but I want to continue to watch it. And I just know this, this is not the right thing. This is not it when we're going that direction because this, this means that if there's more people walking around with it, then we have issues with people bumping into each other and more people getting infected uh, when they are not, not being mindful of it. There are 23,900 cases on average. This is going up. It was as low as uh, just went below 20,000, almost right here, right at 20,000. And it's, since then, the, the seven day average is now almost at 24,000 per day. And if you look at this, this is the, uh, this is the United States. This was supposed to go down to zero. I want to show this over and over again because it plateaus and then, it, and then they are talking about the second wave. So people call it what uh, we could, and I'm, I, don't, I, I don't anticipate it. I anticipate more of this. This is what University of Washington's talking about. But you could get a, uh, a double hump in the first wave, and which is kind of like what we're seeing here, where it could turn around and come back down. That would be like a double hump. That's what I'm, I'm hoping that that's what that is, and that people are mindful and that uh, we all wear masks and social distancing we still need to do even though social distancing is going the wrong direction. This is by the University of Washington. They're the ones that have done all the studies and that people were talking about and thinking about like crazy, but now are, we're kind of ignoring it. And this right now is not a good positive rate. Remember how I told you we need to be below 5%? Well, it's going the wrong direction. It's gone up. And part of that problem is we're not doing enough testing. And uh, I heard, uh, I think it's Harvard that said we need to be at like 900,000 tests the most ever we had was 583. Based upon some of the statistics that I'm looking at, I think we need to be more at around 700,000 tests in order for us to get well below 5% positive rate. And the reason why you want to know that is because if you're testing more people and you're going to get a positive rate of less because you're testing such a mass number of people rather than just testing the people that you think have it. Now you're testing so many people that you can figure out exactly who's got it so that you can quarantine them and everybody they come in contact with with proper contact tracing and that's a whole nother story for another episode. Holy smokes. 
as far as, and then just know this is, uh, this is hospital resource use and they say that this is where the next wave's gonna be. So I'm not gonna get that into detail because I did that on, one on Tuesday. But California, we're at 155,000 cases, 3,387 new cases per day. That's the average for the seven days. You can see this is the seven day average. It's gone up. We were all the way back here at, this is where 1,500 is. This is where 1,000 is. Now we're averaging 3,387 per day. And these are the most impacted counties in the state of California, and look where they all are, Southern California. Good thing that we live in an area that has a lot of ventilators and great hospitals. There are some uh, like uh, other count counties like Imperial that are having an issue because they don't have as many hospitals as us, so they're more impacted to the point where they don't have that many ventilators. That, and I'm sure they can borrow some, but it just shows you how, uh, how the smaller the community, the, the more the coronavirus can, can uh, impact the community. Uh, like in Arizona, the Navajo Nation. That's not a good one. I think they're almost out of uh, ventilators. And as far as unlocking this, uh, remember I was talking about this, how important masks are? Well, you know what's happened, right? This happened. Newsom made it a state order. So he's in line with my thinking after looking at everything going, gosh, this is not a political thing. This is just one of those things where you need to wear a mask. So there's a new order where you need to wear a mask. And somebody said, yeah, well, the Orange County Sheriff said he's not going to do anything about it. Or somebody said that. But I'm, I'm here to tell you that if, if he sees people clowning around too much, they can, they can have ABC run, in, run around and uh, ticket people, find people, and make examples out of people. And that's the direction that they may have to go if, if, uh, if not enough people are complying and he sees enough of this stuff. Because we want to control the spread and the best way is for all of us to wear a mask. I know that you don't think that you have it. Nobody thinks they have it. But if we all wear it, we're not spreading it to each other. That's where the common sense comes in. And even, uh, oh, boy, that's, that's neat. That's interesting. This is a picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger. This is what you do. Uh, this was my last slide that I did prior to this. Just trust me. You could tell by the hair, right? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Forgot to make the blue box connected to the white text. Anyways, any, what he said is, this is 100% the right move. This will help us beat this terrible virus. The science is unanimous. If we all wear masks, we slow down the spread and can reopen safely. It's not a political issue. Anyone making a political issue is an absolute bleep who can't read. Exactly. I've done a lot of reading. And that's why you see Singapore, Vietnam, and you see all these countries in South Korea that have, they've controlled the spread because everybody wears a mask. And if you don't wear a mask, it's like, pfft, hasta la vista, baby. That's what it is. It's like that click it or ticket. When we first had to wear seatbelts, people are going, I don't want to wear a seatbelt. That is stupid. Yeah, so stupid that after everybody started wearing them that the fatality rate went down. And as a matter of fact, as of 2019, 97% of everybody wears seatbelts, so the fatality rate went down even more. And I don't have all a pretty graph because people stopped making pretty graphs because we all know that you wear a seatbelt. Kind of like we all should know that we need to wear a mask. It's not a political statement. Wear a mask. You could put your logo on it. And you can go to premium face masks. That's it. It's called actually allovershirts.com, not premium face masks. They have a custom, uh, they have custom masks. You have to actually put in the search one custom masks or you can go, I, I actually on my personal page, I put uh, this article from, uh, or I put an article from the LA Times and in it, I put the exact uh, thread that you have to click on in order to get a mask that looks just like that. Just like that. Anyhow, allovershirts.com. It's a shirt company that said, huh, I think we can make masks and put logos on it and fun things. COVID-19 second wave is what we're all trying to prevent from destroying our economy because we don't want a W-shaped recovery where yeah, everything's starting to look better, especially real estate, but everything is starting to get better and we just don't want it to go back down. That's what we call W-shaped recovery. So before the coronavirus, Everything looks awesome. Then we have after the disease. Thank you, Logan Motashami. Follow him on Facebook. He's awesome. Logan Motashami. M-O-H-T-A-S-H-A-M-I. After the disease, everything looked nasty. 
and but things are starting to improve. Look at the purchase application index. If you want an idea of what low interest rates does to our marketplace and why demand is so hot and we don't have enough properties and, uh, and we need more to come on, show this to all homeowners. It's up 21% year over year. It was down 33% year over year. It's also 11 year high. Do you know what that means? You have to go back to 2009 to see th these kind of levels. That's a long, long time ago. Mortgage purchase applications are way up, which means people are teed up and ready to go to purchase. Those are applications, builders, sentiment going back up. You see how I said we don't want a W because everything is starting to really improve. The builder sentiment jumped 21 points to 58. Anything above 50 is positive. It's at 58. Oh, I just did that. So jobless claims gradually decline. But you know what? We still have a lot that we're dealing with. 1.5 million people, they filed for unemployment last week. And there are still the insured unemployment that continue to draw from unemployment is 20,544,000. A lot of people. We need them to go back to work. We need to get this economy moving with masks on. It's going to be a slow dial. It's going to be a slow burn. What I call a long slog. It's not going to be instantaneous. So I'm just going to remind you, I will not have a housing debrief next week. No, I won't. I will be in an RV, a little bit smaller than this, but this is my example. I will be in an RV doing some fun things, unplugging. Try to get in touch with me. Good luck. I am unplugging. I have Matt that will hold down the fort while I'm gone. Uh, you go to reports, R-E-P-O-R-T-S, on housing.com. It's your local real estate snapshot. This is where you go to subscribe and you get a month free. Use the coupon code FIRE because the market is on fire. It is hot. The only way to douse it a little bit is for more homes to come on the market. Talk to homeowners. Let's get more homes on the market. It's a good time to place your home on the market. There are sample reports at my website. Thank you, escrow leaders. I love it. We must be good. I better not do that one thing. Somebody took a snapshot of when I did it and said you're a pirate, so I won't do that again. We must be good servants to be good leaders. I love that. That's why they're called escrow leaders. They're independent escrow uh, a company regulated by the Department of Business Oversight. They have branches in Orange and Riverside counties. They're here for you. They have 16 escrow offices and 40 employees. And you know what? They take good care of you. They take good care of your clients and their money and everybody is safe and they have all the safeguards and all the protections and they're very involved in the industry associations and they're very dedicated to servicing the communities. They walk the talk and they're actively involved in their community. They handle all types of escrows. Contact them today at 949-373-7000. That's 949-373-7000. Hey kids, I'm wrapping up. Oops, not cocktail q and I forgot to shut that off. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm not going to do Q&A. We're teeing up Father's Day here. And uh, we're, we're going to probably hit the pool, that type of thing. And uh, I just want to say thank you very much for coming. Happy Father's Day to all. Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy Sunday fathers, grandfathers for Father's Day. This is one of my children, the only one to come. He stayed for most of it. And then he fell asleep. Just kidding. But then, uh, but I appreciate Mason, you watching. Uh, do you have anything to say? Are you excited about the uh, RV trip? Uh, yeah, I'm kind of excited. What are you gonna do? What's gonna be your favorite part, you think? Hiking on the trails. And s'mores. Man, I love s'mores. We have the way, we've got it dialed in so that it melts the chocolate so perfect. Can't, can't duplicate it anywhere else. Okay. It's just awesome. We're gonna be doing all that stuff. So, that's it. Everybody, have a good weekend. We appreciate you coming, and, and we'll have a Q&A two weeks from today because I'm off next week. I will not be doing these housing debriefs. I will be RVing with the children. Some one-on-one -on -one time. Some, maybe some focused time. Yes, I'm going to be present. <laughs> I wish I could flip the camera around show you my wife's look. She's gone. I believe it when I see it. Walk the talk. Excuse me. Thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend.